Hey cosplayers, welcome to another quick tip clip video. In this one we're going to be talking about how to shape EVA foam for cosplay. Uh, you've probably had the question before or as you've get, gotten going or even uh, now asking how do you properly shape EVA foam? Uh, can I use a hair dryer to do it? What are, what are the tools I have to have and what's the best foam for holding its shape and for heat shaping? Alright, so with that we're going to dive in and answer these questions for you. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and select all notifications so you get notified whenever a quick tip clip video comes out so you can be at the top of your game and cosplay like a boss. All right, with that, let's go ahead and jump in. And if you've had some questions about shaping EVA foam, comment right now in the description below. Say yes, Y-E-S. All right, with that, let's jump in. So to answer a couple of those questions right off the bat, can I use a hair dryer? No. <laughs> um, which it doesn't get hot enough to really heat up the foam enough to really get it to keep its shape and hold it. Um, you can use a hairdryer to an extent with some foams uh, to just do a simple curve, which is going to be uh, something like this, where you just have it, um, you know, just curve in one direction. Uh, but you kind of have to like do it and then have it keep it held in that position for quite a long time to have it be able to stay there. So. What I recommend using tools wise is sticking with a heat gun. Get yourself a heat gun. Um, I've had a couple. I've included a description in the description. I'll include a links to a couple of them. Uh, there's one on Amazon that's really inexpensive uh, and works fairly well. And it's a great starter one. Um, Wagner recently sent this one to me. It's like the Cadillac of heat guns and it's amazing. I'd highly recommend it. And that's which one I'm going to be using. It's the Wagner uh, 550, Ferno 550. Um, and it's super awesome, but you don't need to go super fancy on the heat gun off the bat. Um, work your way up to it, but just get a heat gun. All right. So with working with shaping the foam, uh, I mentioned a simple curve and a compound curve, right? So a simple curve is going to be like we showed here where you just curve it in one direction. And then a compound curve is going to be something um, more like this, where you have a lot more of a kind of a scooped uh, dish to it, more of like a bowl like type of uh, complex compound complex curve um, right so we're gonna do one of each on here right so I'm gonna heat up the foam basically on a regular heat gun that just has low and high kick it onto high we're working with what the foam here um, would actually which actually doesn't burn as easily um, so you don't have to worry too much, but whenever you're heating, you want to always kind of keep your heat gun moving so that you don't keep it in one place too long and burn your, burn your foam. Now, one of the key differences between working with wet the foam and, uh, other, um, traditional EVA foams for cosplay is that, uh, it does take a little bit longer to heat up with the foam but it does have a little bit longer working time. It stays hot a little bit longer, um, and it does hold its shape uh, stronger and firmer once it does cool down. So right now I'm just running the heat uh, across it, keeping it moving, um, and I don't need to be moving that fast. I can move it kind of a pace like this, just as long as it's not staying in one place too long. And I'm just heating up this whole piece right now. You can see as I'm heating it up, it's starting to kind of get a little bit of a a shinier sheen to it um, compared to the matte black that it had before and that's meaning that it's, it's heating up and all those cells are closing together and it's just becoming a smoother kind of more shiny surface there that has all those kind of closed together all right so on one side here I'm going to just do a simple curve right and so you can do that if you're doing a van brace or something like that simply just hold it around your arm that you're going to be doing the van brace on, or if you need to, you can kind of uh, just kind of curl it to get that curve. Um, I like to do it on my arm with what the foam, you can pretty much just kind of hold it around there and it'll hold that shape. If you're using some of the other foams, um, then you'll want to like over curl it past where you think you need it because it will have the tendency to bounce back a little bit on itself. Um, I'm going to do that for just a couple seconds here and it, it'll cool. And there you go. So you can see actually, even just holding it around my wrist, it actually took kind of the curvature of my wrist a little bit and everything too. Turn it to the side a bit. So it actually Easy kind of bit. took the curvature yeah. of my wrist 
a little bit, you can see kind of along the horizon there, um, which is super cool. It's just like really just like takes the shape and just holds it there. Um, on this side, we're just going to heat it up again, and I'm going to show you a compound curve. It's on the cool mode, cooling down. Um, here we go, kick it back on here. So now I'm just going to heat up this side, and we're going to press a compound curve into this to where it curves in multiple directions. And for that, uh, I've seen uh, lots of different uh, cool techniques for being able to kind of push that curve into the foam. You can like press it down over a bowl. You can create a cool little like um, a raising tool like uh, Odin has done or that Evil Ted has on his channel. Check out those. Um, maybe I'll put links to some of those in the description. And um, or I haven't quite decided how I want to create a tool yet for it because I've just been using my the back of my uh, uh, knife honing uh, steel um, and I just kind of press into the foam and just kind of scoop it like that. I'll put it into my hand and press in like this or, and I'll kind of like pull on the foam a little bit while I'm pushing in to kind of add a little bit deeper curve, pressing into that. You can also, if you need to, just like kind of use your knee as an anvil kind of thing and roll it across your knee to do that. Um, I find to get like really deep curves, I like to press it in with the back of the handle. So the, um, the honing steel that I talked about in a previous video um, and linked to, it has a nice round back to it um, on Amazon so that you can do this with it as well because some of them might have a little hook or different things on the bottom. But So you can see right there, there's our complex curve. Now oftentimes your curves won't need to be this intense for complex curves. It can be a little bit more subtle, kind of like this, um, these pauldrons here. Um, these, at some point too, you end up putting uh, darts if uh, the curve is um, significant enough that you can't really press it in and without it like getting wavy or different things like that. And so you'll end up adding a dart and then you'll just glue those pieces together to get that curve, which we'll cover those type of things in another video. But there you go, heating it to be able to get a simple curve and a complex curve. Um, we covered a little bit of the differences in heating with what the foam versus some others. Uh, but just to give you a quick uh, demonstration here, sorry, I've kind of prepped some of these here to just kind of show you um, that with uh, what the foam, just to kind of show you like the hold um, and then the hold of what you can get um, with uh, regular traditional cosplay EVA foams uh, and what it looks like with the different thicknesses, right? So um, like I've said before, uh, you want to go with like a thicker one to get like a stronger hold so when you pull on this it can kind of bounce back to its uh, shape. Um, with the other ones when you go to thinner foams like a four millimeter it'll still it'll keep its hold but it doesn't hold that keep that shape super well it can kind of get bent out of shape pretty easily and not have a keep that curve as much when you get to the thinner foams like a four millimeter. Um, so then I did the same thing here with so now on the four millimeter for what the foam you can see it's going to have more of the hold of like a 10 millimeter. So when you do that, it's just going to spring back and hold really strong. Um, so you don't need to like reinforce it or anything like that to get it to keep its uh, hold its shape. Um, and even the two millimeter uh, for what the foam is going to be similar to like the four millimeter, right? It's, it, it's going to hold its shape, but you know, it might kind of like lose a little bit of it if you kind of get bend it out and things like that. Um, but so basically kind of the ratio that I've uh, found with these is if you just kind of assume you're going to get a similar hold and strength for uh, with what the foam of about half of what the number that you're using here. So this is 10 millimeter and you get the same with about a four millimeter and this is four millimeter and you get the same about with a two. So um, just kind of some rule of thumbs depending on which foam you're working with, um, all of which work great for cosplay. Um, I'm using what the foam because it's ours and that's what I have around um, and I love it and it holds great so uh, but yeah so that kind of gives you an idea on uh, different types of foams how they hold uh, 
Floor mat foams are going to be similar to some of these just as far as like the thickness ratios. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, heat shaping, you've got, uh, you want to use a heat gun. I'll put links to uh, those in here. Um, some tricks for, and keep it, yeah, keep it moving on the foam so you don't burn your foam. Um, and you can always reheat it and shape it again if you need to. If you didn't quite get it the shape you needed in the first pass, heat it up, reshape it. That's the beauty of BVA foam, and you can get exactly what you need, exactly that shape. Um, and then, too, if you think it might be a little uh, flimsy, when you do go and you seal it and prime it, or seal it and paint it and everything, it will increase its structural hold, too. So if, it's, if you're like, oh, I'm not quite sure if this is strong enough, just uh, it, it may be that once you just end up finishing it up, it'll get to that point for you, too. So uh, keep all these things in mind. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, give us a like. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Um, stay tuned, subscribe so that you get these in the future and answer the question for us. What is your great single greatest challenge when it comes to working with EVA foam? Uh, that will help us to be able to hopefully answer your question in a future video. Thank you guys so much and cosplay on my friends.